that there are some students who are not able to attend, but they wanted to see this event. So uh, planning for Roxton. Uh, a lot of times students come into my office and they're they're planning or thinking about Roxton. And the, the most important thing they're thinking about is the courses that are offered there and uh, their particular major. So if I was to talk to the students who are currently at Roxton College, could you guys give us an idea of just sort of the general majors that we have in the room? And and for those majors that um, were a little more maybe difficult to plan for Roxton, if you could give us some some tips or hints of, of how you sort of lined up a semester at Roxton. Do you understand the question? So go ahead, tell me what your majors are and uh, and and for those majors that might have had a more yeah, difficult yeah. time. Jayla, you run things. Jayla, you're you're in charge over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm a business management major, and luckily, like at least Silverman, we have our own advisors, so they kind of help us fit in everything that we like. We have a four-year plan, and then they allocate which classes you should take here. Okay. I'm a government and politics major, um, and so there's government and politics classes obviously here, so that helps a lot with those credits. And then me personally, there was a lot of free elective classes that I had, but then I had like creative writing, which is what I needed to take, and I didn't want to take art at FDU, so I was really excited to take creative writing and get that under my belt here. So I was able to just talk to my advisor and kind of just plan what I wanted to do along with my like, degree audit. I'm Excellent. a psych major. Um, I definitely take a psych class here. Um, it wasn't hard. Um, I think they did tell me that I was one of the few like um psych majors to ever come to Roxton. So okay, not necessarily true, but I hear you. Um. Okay, I'm an acting major and playwriting minor, so I'm here to talk to all my acting students on the call. I don't know if you're here because we can't see the participants, so I'm just shooting the dark, but. Obviously, y'all know that there's a big part of your degree audit for those acting classes. So they, like um, Chris and Jayla were saying, your advisor is going to tell you exactly what acting courses you're going to need to take here. And then they're also going to fill in any other basic college credits that you need. I'm a business major with a concentration in accounting. So the only credits over here that transfer for me are um, Gen Eds, elective. Okay, Gen Eds, that's that's fine. Um, hi, I'm Ariana. I'm a psych major, and recently I decided to declare a British Studies minor. Um, that's something that can be fulfilled while you're in Roxton. In terms of my other credits, I was lucky enough to just take classes based on interest because they were um, general credits or elective credits. Um, and it's been really great so far. Yeah. Excellent. Hi, I'm a criminal justice major. I'm also a sophomore, so you already know that um, there's a lot of credits you need to do in order to fulfill your associate's degree. I was able to fulfill like half of those credits here at Roxton, like the, the science um, requirement, the electives requirement. There's a lot of options here. I'm also, to, um, uh, and um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, it flew out of my mind, but um, there's but like Jayla, there's a government um class here that you can take if you're taking government politics and criminal justice courses here. Excellent. Hi. Excellent. Uh, I'm Joshua. Um, I just actually recently switched to be a history major. So if you're a math major, I would recommend definitely paying advanced because there are absolutely zero math courses here. So if you are a math major, definitely pay in advanced. But I just recently switched to be a history major and a math uh, minor. If you're going for a history major, I would also recommend again the Square Studies minor, as it will definitely help you because then you're able to actually talk about your experience at Roxton rather than like just have this little gap in your academic career. Excellent. Well stated. I would also like to say that recently, and Ariana brought up a point about the minor, every student who goes to Roxton now, and that would include students who have recently returned. By taking the classes at Roxton, if you're a full-time student, which everybody is, you automatically qualify for a British Studies minor. Um, just so you're aware of that. So any student who is interested in going to Roxton, the 15 to 12 to 15 credits that you take at Roxton automatically has you receiving a British Studies minor. Um, just something to uh, to consider as well. Jaden, you're shaking your head. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Hey, 
it's not even that I'm shaking my head. It's I just didn't know that was you know a thing oh, that existed. It, <laughs> so this is new to me. two weeks ago. It just was approved two weeks ago. So this is new information to me as well. Um, but it can be done after the fact. If you would like to pick up a British Studies minor, you've got one coming your way. Okay. Very yeah. good. Quickly, Maggie, what's your major? I double major in psychology and criminology. Okay. Did you have any trouble with planning for Roxton? Um, no, I didn't. So basically, I knew I wanted to come like since I was a freshman. So my advisor and I, we kind of blocked out like classes that I could take there or ones that I should take before going and after going. So I took UNIV there. Um, and then looking at the, sorry about that. Um, looking at the list of like courses that they offered, I kind of matched up to like what I wanted. So I took the psychology class. I took the British government and politics class. Um, and then I took global issues. Excellent. And Rhea, what's your major? So I am a marketing with a contradiction, digital marketing with a minor in advertising major. Um, as for like my classes, I didn't really have that tricky of, I it wasn't really that hard, similar to Maggie, you know, I had told my advisor um, at the beginning, you know, I'm interested in, in studying about to Roxton. So we, since the beginning, we had kept classes aside. The only tricky thing was, is that um, I'm doing my master's, I'm in the four plus one program. So, and I'm graduating my uh, bachelor's one semester early. So the only tricky thing with that is that last semester when I had gone, I was a first semester senior. Now, when you're first semester senior, you have to take, uh, you're starting grad classes for the plus one year. So the only tricky thing was getting that grad class to be online. That was the only tricky thing I was able, uh, that I had an issue with, but it ended up going through and ended up, and I ended up being able to take that um, online, which which worked excellent. out. And excellent. That brings me to a point. So I'm glad you were able to bring that up and, and we'll, we'll get to you shortly. Thanks for joining us as well. Um, students who are at Roxton are also able to take asynchronous online courses as well. So I just want those students who are interested in going to Roxton to know that if there is a course that you would like to take um, back at FDU or your home institution um, that is online, you can do it as long as it is asynchronous. And, and I, I'm assuming folks know what asynchronous means, but if you don't, it means that it's not at a, a particular time of day. You can sort of log on and take the class whenever you'd like. Because of the nature of Roxton, because of the structure of the classes and guest speakers and trips, you're not able to sort of plan um, to be uh, anywhere uh, at a set time. Um, so you can take an online course, but it does have to be asynchronous. So I just want students to know that as well. Okay. You can also take independent studies here as well. In Absolutely. Well said, Josh. You can also take an independent study um, with a Roxton faculty member if you'd like to do that. If there's a particular subject um, that you have um, any sort of an interest in, um, if there is a faculty member at Roxton who can accommodate that and, uh, and work with you, you can also take a three credit independent study course at Roxton. So there is some flexibility, even though there is a limited amount of Roxton courses taught each semester, there's some flexibility built in when it comes to online courses, as well as um, independent studies with faculty members there at Roxton. Good. So I think that sort of covers the general idea of how to plan academically for Roxton. Um, what about when it comes to sort of planning for um, the flights and passport and, and, and overall jitters when it comes to studying abroad? The students that are currently at Roxton, have you guys settled in on a scale of one to 10, sort of how nervous were you in regards to studying abroad at Roxton? Have those fears sort of gone away or are you still nervous to be there or, or what? Jayla, speak up, let us know. <laughs> um. I wasn't really scared to come here. I think also because like I don't live in New Jersey, so I already go to school out of state. So it's kind of like that sense of not being at home and being kind of far away from home. Um, I mean, I was excited. I wasn't really scared. I feel like I've settled in now. Um, I feel like we've been here for a really long time, even though it's only week six. But I also feel like time's going really fast. Um, so like on that scale, I would say like a three for me. Um, no nerves, really no nerves, just excitement. I think if you're going into something like this, you have to understand, you know, we're told that it's similar because we share language, but, um, it's not, it's very different. It is a foreign country. So prepare yourself in that way. But, um, 
Everybody here is used to Americans, which helps. Uh, they're very welcoming. They're prepared to handle your anxieties and your questions. Um, so if you're not being thrown to the wolves, but if you're going to make a decision like this, go into it confidently knowing that this is what you want to do because it's a long, expensive flight home. I, so. I was actually a commuter, so I do know those fears. I've pretty much never left the U.S. and be away from my parents for a while. So yeah, I definitely was nervous, like pretty much nine out of 10 nervous. But I have since settled in. It's really nice here. I've gotten used to like the daily routine here, and those fears pretty much have gone right away by like probably uh, week four, maybe, maybe even earlier than that. I think Excellent. it's I think it's really important to know too is that there is such a support system here at Roxton. Not only are you going to find support system and social groups when you are here and you're meeting people. But the professors especially make it very clear that you can always talk to them. I'm sure the students who are with us who are here in the past know that Dr. Gary talks to us about how we can talk to him about stuff. Like there's people there for you, but also it can be very intense and it is a very rigorous study course. Um, so something that they've always talked to us about that I think is also important to keep in mind is that you should, if you especially if you need to, take time to recharge your own energy. I know that we're not really talking about all of the weekend trips that you can go on yet, but especially because you kind of sign up for all of them at one time in the beginning, let yourself breathe a little bit. And it's okay if you need to be patient with yourself and take more time than you find other people adjusting to it. Like no experience is invalid and everybody just wants like, there's definitely a feeling that everybody wants each other to be okay. So that's the... Well said. I like to think that everybody's sort of in the same boat. Yeah. Especially the fact that pretty much your grades rely on papers that you write. And there's like no homework here, which may sound good on paper, but it's like two papers per class, plus one other class that decides that six papers. So it is very hard. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let her speak. She been waiting. <laughs> um, I know before I came here. Oh, sorry, Brian, you can go. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I know before I came here, I was at a degree of nervousness because I have been to a foreign country before, but I, was, I only stayed there for a week. I have never stayed any more than three weeks, three months away from home. So I was very, when I first came here, I felt very homesick. Like I, I would call my parents, message them every time, make sure, making sure they're okay. Mostly handling stuff at home. So I'm always like, like my mind is always circling around things back at home and really I should be circling around here. But as Lou and everybody else has said, the support system here is really great. You have professors who are willing to talk to you. You also have people here who are willing to talk to you too, like your peers and everything. So the you feel right at home when you come here. It's very comforting and very supportive here. No, so you can get your steps in. It's good to hear. Now, Will, I, I see you're sitting there. Prior to your going to Roxton, did you have any nerves? If you were speaking to a student who was planning on going to Roxton, what would you say to them? Um, so I personally had travel experience before going to Roxton, at least internationally, for school, um, which is what inspired me to like want to do Roxton from like the first day of college. But um, for anybody else, I kind of understand like with my first time, there's like a lot of nerves. You're going to a completely different world, different culture, different government, different everything. Um, and you don't really have to be nervous. I feel like come in just more curious than anything. Um, there's there's so much that the United Kingdom had to offer that we saw. And I'm sure the students now are seeing now on the trips and everything. And uh, it's overall a very, very it's a great experience, an experience that a lot of people regret. A lot of people I talk to who haven't gone to study abroad in their college studies, they say, I have no regrets. But the one thing I have is not going abroad because well just, said. yeah. Well said. All right. Excellent. Um, Moving right along. I think we sort of discussed sort of first impressions of Roxton. What about the overall sort of physical properties? What about, what about like your, your, your bedrooms? Are you happy with them? Are you not happy with them? Is this that Jayla looks like she doesn't want to discuss it. I don't even know if I want to call on her. V, do you have anything you'd like to say? <laughs> The past group um, should talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll throw it back over to Yeah, I can do the kind of 
Go ahead. What are you saying? Is it, tell me. Tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think I'm, I'm, yes, you guys. Um, I think the season that you come really has an effect on the moment. <laughs> um, but I do want to say it is stunning. It's the closest thing most Americans will ever get to living in a castle. Um, it's beautiful, and there's no denying that. Any time of year you come, it's really something to see. Um. And I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> the grounds are pretty amazing. There's like a whole forest and lake. And you go like on your first day of orientation, they take you all around the different grounds. There's an obelisk that you can take a hike to. Me and Ariana did that on the first week, which was lovely. Um, and so that part is really cool. There are like, you know, it's an old building, so there are issues with that sometimes, um, like we have experienced, but it's it's okay because, you know, there's also a carriage house, which is cool because the bar was in somewhere that used to be a stable. So it's it's neat. It feels a little like, oh, uh, all right. But then you get used to just going down to the basement for class and then like, think, and you don't really think about how the walls are painted with iron. So it, you know, it's, it's, it's just, there's nowhere else like it really. Yeah. Maggie, Maggie, you had your hand raised. Would you like to say something about your experience living at Roxton Abbey? Yeah. Um, so one thing for people who are considering going, um, you definitely like can get a single room if you want to. One thing that me and my friend who went together, like we did on the uh, roommate application, um, is it asked you kind of like a series of questions being like, do you prefer a single or a double? And we both picked singles. Um, and then it says, um, if you happen to get a double, who would you want your roommate to be? So I put my friend and we ended up rooming together um which they basically just go off of that question like not if you want like you're single um I loved having a roommate when it came down to it because we'd wake up in the morning together and just kind of be like oh like what are you wearing to like this trip or you know like we kept each other kind of like on schedule but if you do want a single I suggest don't put a person down <laughs> um good tip, good tip. I will say this, and, and for students who are who are currently planning on going to Roxton or interested in going to Roxton, in the post acceptance uh, portion of the application, there are a number of bits of paperwork that need to be filled out. So you'll see the room request um, uh, portion in that section of the application. Um, so in that, if you listen to Maggie and you you absolutely have a single room, you want a single room, um, just put no roommate, not interested, and see what happens. And I think. There's a high percentage of uh, of uh, a chance that you um, you'll have a single. Good. Any other any other questions about or anybody other statements about um, sort of the buildings and grounds at Roxton? What about how easy it is to get around? Has anybody else taken a or has anybody who's returned from Roxton taken a trip off campus on their own, separate from a Roxton yeah. trip? Where have you guys currently at Roxton? Where have you gone? I mean, I haven't left the country, but I've been to London quite a few times, and public transport here is so easy, it's so user-friendly, so expensive. Um, it's really so different than what we have in the U.S. You can't compare it. Like, you don't expect it to be as commonly used or as easy to use as it is. Um, but I definitely don't think it's something that, um, I mean, it really allows you to do a lot and see a lot at a reasonable price that's friendly to students. And on that note, there's a lot that's friendly to students, so I'm sure we're going to come to money in a different part of the conversation, but um, transport is something that is very accessible. Um, I have to drive come here from another country, and I have to go and pick her up from the Banbury train station, and all I had to do was call a cab, and, they, and the cab um, the cab services here in Banbury already know where Rockton College is at, so you'll have no problem um, accessing those taxi services. And as soon as I tell them Rockton College, I need to go to Banbury, they're like, okay, come here, 10 minutes, boom, bada bing, bada boom, done. They just take me there, and then we got to take another taxi back. And it ranges from, um, like, from anywhere to Banbury, around 10 pounds from the, from the Abbey to anywhere in Banbury. So it's really not that expensive. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's really accessible around here. Okay. Did any did any of you uh, who have recently returned from Rocks in last semester, Jaden, did you may take many trips off campus? Did you do anything sort of not? It, it, I'm talking about separate from travel break, but just sort of on your own. 
No, honestly, it was the, um, I felt like I had a really, not bad experience, but um, with the cabs, it was a little difficult. Not because, like, the cabs, they did show up. The only issue was that uh, halfway through my time being there, uh, my phone plan just terminated, and I had, like, no phone number. And so I, myself, couldn't call a cab. And so that, so I always had to have somebody else call a cab for me. But even then, like, like $20 equivalent each way gets a little pricey after a while. So I took advantage of uh, the trips to Banbury provided by the school, like every, I think every Tuesday, Thursday, I feel like that's when I took, adv I took more advantage of those to be able to get out of campus, like when I could, because yeah. I can eat from where we're dropped off, I can walk to the train station and easily get back. That's even how I got back from, from travel break. I lined up my return with Steve coming to Banbury and I got on the bus and got a free ride back. So Excellent. Excellent. If I do that. It's fantastic. That's, that's just how my class schedule worked out. So it might vary depending on the schedule, but I felt, I felt like that was the, the trips back and forth from Banbury that were provided. I feel like were really good, but the cabs, if you don't have a number, like in my situation where you just can't be independent and call a cab, it's like, it's a little frustrating. All right. And then just as a caveat to that, because this is so important, this is a question that I get from students all the time. And um, it always changes semester to semester. But when it comes to phones at Roxton, because I sort of have a general idea of what students do. But for the students, I'd like to know students currently at Roxton, but more importantly, the students that have returned from Roxton. What did you guys do for, with phones? What plan and I mean, overall plan, what do you think works best for you in regards to bringing yourself from, from home, purchasing a cell phone there? What what did you do, Maggie, for example? I remember speaking to you when you first arrived and you had some issues. Were you able to get that squared away? Yeah, so I went through my carrier, which is Verizon, and you just call them and you say, I'm going out of the um, country for this amount of time and it'll charge you I think based off like I think like it's there's like a plan that they have like a monthly plan and then I guess if you exceed type of like minutes or calls or something um, it worked for me um, my family was able to like afford it and do it um, the problem that I had was once I got there, my cellular data I think was turned off and I just had to completely shut my phone off to kind of like reboot it and like recalibrate yes. it so that definitely helps um and most of the time like your carrier will have a plan for an international plan um and if that's something like you and your family can do then I suggest it because I after I recalibrated my phone I didn't have any problems okay what are we talking about let's let's talk real numbers how much how much per month did that cost you um I want to say it was like a hundred hundred bucks a month. month. Okay. Yeah. Not, not but that's also Verizon. They're just kind of crazy. Okay. Do so, you guys who are currently at Roxon, is this sort of what you are, you're up to as well? Did you change your plan? What did you do? Go ahead, Josh, tell us. Personally, I actually just used the Wi-Fi here. I don't use um, data, but I, I did, though I have not used it at all recently. Um, I did get just one of those cheap little burner phones for like about 25 pounds and got a day card up and got like one of those um, SIM data cards for like 10 pounds, uh, like a 10 or 20 pound plan. And, uh, and that's been like my UK phone almost, though I haven't used it. I would think for me personally, that's a good idea as like an emergency phone and then just turn off like data for so that way you don't get charged for the international data right okay are you guys other students there are you guys currently doing the same thing as well i have an international i have t-mobile so i just like got like an international pass which has like unlimited calling and calling texting text, and then data. and a certain amount of data and so like, that's just what i Okay. Like I think it's 20 gigabytes that yeah. you get of like 5G. And then afterwards, it slows down to 2G. Yeah. But 2G is not, not it's not going to cut it. Yeah. Exactly. You can't even load a flex. But you can buy, like, once your international pass is done, however long it lasts, you can just like buy a new one. So, like, when I ran out of data, like, I feel like ours has been lasting like a month. A month yeah, a yeah. Month each pass. So, yeah. 
All right. Um, if you don't already have it, WhatsApp is something you should download. Oh, you know, yeah. When you just said, and everybody instead what, of you, being the one um, that's used the most. Yeah, and no, WhatsApp is just great. So definitely, it doesn't always keep your call in the end, like it kind of drops it sometimes. But other than that, it's really convenient, really good. Download it. I agree with that. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, this is boring, this stuff. So let's move on. <laughs> Um, when it comes to weekend trips, when it comes to weekend trips, you guys just got back from Edinburgh, Scotland. I saw some some photos. Um, how did that go? It was cool. We so had fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it was really cool. All you, right. have to, you have to plan it out yourself. My own so hotel. But other than that, there was a lot of cool things there, like Art of the Sea, the Camera Obscura Museum, um, Edinburgh Castle, which I'm pretty sure you've seen dozens of photos of, as well as Art of the Sea. There's, a, there's all sorts of things I would recommend doing at least a little research for um, these types of trips that you have to plan out. So that way you're not going to a city and just wandering around because you would miss a lot of stuff. Yes, okay. I really do a lot of research. Because I mean, I even found a nice little hidden thing. There's a nice little truck recording tour in Edinburgh that I went on. Really, really good. I would recommend it. I know that Excellent. I was there, and there was a lot of um, a lot of cool um, attractions there and places to go to. So what I would do is I would look at my map at the hotel and just search around like where, like what what places are around the hotel. And if I see something that I like, then I just put on the direction just scoot on um, over there. It's a lot of bars there too. So so if you like yeah. drinking, you can and there's a a ball pit bar there too around the area. So that that was that was fun. you gotta go to Bali Ballers yeah. at least yeah. once. Yeah. Well, so that's like a broad and I think that's like yeah. cool. that's another thing too. There a lot of the museums here usually don't cost yeah. anything. Maybe a few of the more touristy museums might cost a, a, a pound, a few pounds, but most of the, like the historical museums that you come across, mm -hmm. a lot of the times they're free. Like in Oxford, there's the Ashmolean Museum, that's free. The Museum of Scotland, that's free. Mm -hmm. A lot of the museums here are free, which is a good. Excellent. Free museums are always a good thing. So you guys who, who were who were at Roxton last semester, when it comes to weekend trips, is there a trip that students shouldn't miss out on? One that is sort of one that sticks out in your mind as being the best one? Kenilworth Castle. <laughs> Kenilworth Castle. Will, you were nodding your head. What do you think is one that students shouldn't miss? I mean, don't miss Paris and Edinburgh. I mean, I know I don't know if they still offer Paris, but that's the two trips that we go to that are outside of the country besides Cardiff. And Cardiff's really nice too. So going to the capital cities is really fun. Um, London, they offer more than once as well as Oxford. So once you go once, it's kind of your jurisdiction or whether you want to do it again or not. But those are like the top cities. Um, Cambridge was incredible toward the end. It was just a beautiful like biker uh, city, 31 colleges. So that was really, really nice as the day trip. Um, Stratford's also nice too. I mean, if you go there once, I mean, people in the Shakespeare class now, I know you guys go around 14 times. So maybe it's like your hometown, <laughs> you guys by now, but it's your um, home. Oh. yeah, it's definitely <laughs> nice just checking out the towns. They give a lot of like what they have to offer. All you have to do is just go to reception and just ask them like, this is the town we're going to this weekend. Uh, I want to sign up, but what do they have? What should I do? And they tell you, you could stand there for two hours and they just tell you everything. So it really fits. It really oh, just fits your wants to Excellent. Excellent. Three, yeah. One museum no. in Stratford I found that's really cool is the Mad Museum. The Boston Spurs are two and a half hours to depart. <laughs> you got, can you, all right. Okay. All right. Well, let's so, move on. All right. Let's move along now. We don't want to get bogged down in it here. Um. What about travel break? Now, this is more for the students who have recently returned from Roxton, speaking to the students who are going to be going to Roxton. Give us an idea of what you did on travel break. Jaden, what did you do? So uh, I went to Spain to visit my girlfriend that was also uh, that was also traveling abroad. So I met her for I think it was I think it was about 10 days. I know travel break is a little bit shorter, but I had with my schedule, I had like one or two more days off within a given week. So I was able to stay for a little bit longer. Uh, and I kind of, we went through Madrid, uh, Toledo, uh, we did, uh, oh my gosh, starting to blank, Valencia, <laughs> but no, it was a, it was a really good trip. 
but Excellent. the only the only my only thing with uh, with travel break is getting to an airport wow it's like that's what really like gets you i split a cab with like six other people including uh including ria and it was rough but okay. i i did the cab on the way that it was rough back. we had some difficulties it was like 3 a.m in the night in the morning so maybe that's why but go ahead <laughs> uh no we were you know off the uh the route for two hours and i thought i was going to miss my plane so that was pretty sick but um, coming back, I took the train back. I did all public transit on the way back because I really wasn't in a rush. But I wanted to meet Steve there while he was still taking the students into Banbury so I can get a trip back. And it ended up working out. I did that multiple times afterwards, like maybe weekend trips in London. I'd go back while Steve was there to like take us back. But I took public transit on the way back. And I feel like it's it's a lot more cost effective. You just have to have the period of time to do so. It takes right exponentially longer but i feel like the way the way to do it to do it is if you if you can stretch it if you have the time i would say public transit back and then cab on the way there and just split it with how many other people that are going to the same airport excellent ria where did you go for travel break so i had gone to spain um i'd gone to barcelona for five days and then for the rest i'd gone to an island um on the edge of the coast of spain mallorca so i had actually gone with six other five or six other people um so that was really really good um and you know the the trans you know, we were talking earlier the transportation was absolutely amazing um as Jaden said you know we did have a little bit of a, a difficulty you know getting to the airport a little short of amazing um, what a little short of amazing <laughs> um so something else I would really recommend is that if you are going to the same airport as other people on travel break, split that um, cost of the taxi. If you got if that flight time is kind of lining up, split it with it with someone else or with everyone else if you're able to. Um, that definitely helped out. You know, like for example, um, Jaden was going to Madrid. You know, we were we were going to somewhere else, right? But we were still going to the same airport. Our our flight was like an hour or two later, but Jaden's was at like what was it six a.m. right? I think yeah, six six thirty. Yeah. yeah. So it was that, yeah. So that definitely helped. Um, you know, if Jaden paid the price, you know, by himself, it would have been a little bit more than if you know we didn't all split it. So that so really pool helped. Resources. Pool your resources. Yeah, yeah, and also, um, Heathrow is known to um, you know, to have frequent flight times, but there are other uh, airports around as well, Stansted. For example, um, that have cheaper uh, flights. So don't only look at one uh, airport. Look at every single one you can. Stansted, um, Gatwick, Luton, Birmingham. There's other airports besides Heathrow for sure. Just Maggie, one you had your hand. Piece, oh, uh, sorry, just one little piece of advice. If you are flying, um, specifically Ryanair, <laughs> Jaden's laughing. He knows, but. Make sure all of your liquids fit in one quarter Ziploc bag. Like, no, I'm not talking Very like- Very specific anything. information. It ha no, because I ended up having to throw out like $70 worth of things. Like, no. yeah, it was it's not fun. You know, I had bought like a brand new travel size toothpaste, et cetera, et cetera, oh. right? I ended up having to throw out like 75% of my things out. And like other people also had to as well. So I'm not talking like, make sure your cleanser fits in like a 100 ml tube, you know? Make sure everything fits collectively in one Ziploc, or else you're going to have to throw that. So just Words of advice. Same thing. Very Maggie, much. <laughs> Maggie, what did you do for travel break? So I went to like three different spots. So in the beginning of travel break, um, I also went with other students there. We went to Belfast. So, and although it's technically like still the UK, um, we went on St. Patrick's Day and they all still celebrated St. Patrick's Day there. It was so much fun. I recommend <laughs> like you're going to like Belfast or like Ireland for at least like, well, I mean, um, you're in the fall, but in the springtime, like it was so much fun. And then we went to Amsterdam and Belgium and, um, from Amsterdam to Belgium, we just took a bus. So that was very convenient um but yeah just kind of like maybe like exploring like other different places too um yeah because I don't think I'd ever go back to those places 
Like No, it's the type of place you'll go simply because you're already in Europe. You're at Roxton. So you're like, you know what? Let me go to Belfast and check it out. Yeah. Or Amsterdam or anywhere. Will, mm -hmm. where did you go for travel break? Um, so I went to Rome uh, in Italy. And then I also went to Barcelona and Mallorca. And we met up with the group that went, that Rhea just said, in Mallorca. Um, so it was a lot of fun, um, great experience. Uh, Italy and Spain during that season, especially in the spring, it was just starting to get warm. So it was nice to be on that side of uh, Europe and whatnot. Um, I went with a couple of my, the guys that I was with. We all traveled together. We did the same uh, way, transit there, transit back. We also did Ryanair, um, like Rubia said. I mean, just for any airline, just keep an eye out for, you know, what, is required for your seats and what's required for your luggage because there's like specific measurement luggage, specific measurement weights. Uh, if all your liquids and even like some like electronics, depending on like a battery could all fit in the bag. They, they inspect it. Sometimes they don't. Um, the good thing about the airports in Europe though, is that it takes literally five minutes to walk in, check in and go to your gate. Like mm -hmm. it is super, super fast. Um, so don't really feel too, too pressured on time, but obviously get there early um we flew the entire time uh we flew from the uh, airport in england to uh italy to spain to mallorca and then back to england again and it was so much cheaper just money wise but it honestly just depends on wh what you're doing what day it is and i guess the volume of each plane and capacity and price right excellent so you, the students that are currently at Roxton, are you guys sort of, um, you're at the point right now that you're looking at travel breaks. Does anybody have their plans booked? What are you guys up to? <laughs> okay, well, me and B, um, we're going to Amsterdam, um, but we're going like in like the middle of travel break because I guess we want to time in the beginning to like do essays and chill and then also have enough time to get back. So we're going to Amsterdam for um, four days. Excellent. I'm also going to Amsterdam and Belgium and Luxembourg because why not when you're there? What else am I going to go to Luxembourg, as Brian said? Um, so I think it helps to stay in like one region. I know a lot of people don't do that, and that's totally fine too. But for me, it just made sense to like stay in a certain area. I'm okay. splitting up my travel break as well. I'm going over to Ireland to meet up with my boyfriend for the first half of travel break. And then I'm also going to Amsterdam for the last part of travel break. Um, which will, which will be cool, like meeting up with like school friends and then coming back like with people that I know to Roxton at the end of it. So I, I took it to two countries. Meanwhile, me, because I've gotten a boring one here, I'm going to be staying on Roxy Terrace with my parents for the first three days and then heading to London for the next five. My parents are going to stay for the last day and then I'm going to have two days to like work on that stage and stuff. Um, I'm going to Italy um, Friday very early in the morning, and I'm going to stay there for like almost a week because I have a friend who lives out there. She's offering me a her place to stay, so oh. very cool. Wow, very cool. I really wanted to mention. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so I'm doing a four day cruise at the beginning of travel break um, to Italy, and then it takes us to France and Spain as well. And wow. then the other half, um, I'll be in Amsterdam as well yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, it makes it easier like one that we really wanted to go like me and my friend and two like instead of flying from italy back to england it makes it easier to go to italy to amsterdam then back to england because we're worried about time constraints and all that like making it back in time for a club gotcha gotcha so a lot of people going to amsterdam i'm going to assume you're all renoir fans all right so let's um so you guys i think we talked about sort of planning we talked about nerves we talked about the physical property we talked about classes we talked about planning we talked about travel break um what about sort of i mean and i don't even want to broach the subject but what about the food at roxton oh Sort of give us a <laughs> so, there's a lot of variety of food here. I personally really like it. Breakfast doesn't have as much variety as lunch and dinner, but it's still at least decent. Um, but lunch and dinner, you get a wide variety. You may get pasta one day, the next day you might get salmon, 
they're they're even a lot of the food like steak and a pie, Yorkshire pudding is here. So tons of variety. You'll get it on uh, it's the British cuisine here. There's also a lunch menu that they always post up in the bulletin board for every week. Like each week it changes, so you know ahead of time what what um what's what's the food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you know, and um I, I, I like it actually. I know people say that British foods don't have any seasoning bland, but I I you can attest that some of the foods do have seasoning and taste. It's yeah. actually very tasty. Doesn't mean you won't need the salt shaker though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did, did, okay, any, did any of the students um, who uh, were there last semester have family come and visit them while they were at Roxton? So my, it sounded, dad, it looked, my dad ended up coming actually towards the very end. Um, we were staying in uh, the UK for an extra 10 days. Um, so he had come on the day of or the day, it was a day prior actually, I believe, um, that everyone else was leaving. Um, you know, so he had actually stayed in the Abbey, which was really cool. Um, so he was able to get like an experience of that, but he was also able, you know, to get the experience of, uh, you know, the food there as well. We're on the topic of food. So I remember it was, um, I believe it was either pasta or it was a soup day. And I remember he was like, this is my absolute favorite. And like, I loved it and everything. So um, he, he found it really good. And the other thing is that um, I obviously had um, multiple like big suitcases, like check-in suitcases, but because we were traveling um, around the UK as well um, after, and like, I wasn't, we weren't staying at the Abbey. We were going to be elsewhere. Um, something really great was that, um, you know, I asked reception, you know, am I able to maybe store my luggage or store our luggage, you know, because instead, like, it doesn't make sense if you're traveling so much, you don't want to be hauling around, you know, because there were two of us, you know, we don't want to be hauling around three check in suitcases and there's, you know, two carry ons and everything else. So it doesn't make sense. So I'd ask, you know, is this a way? And she was like, absolutely. You would just store it here. Just come back whenever, you know, whenever, um, you know, you're ready, then come grab it. So that was absolutely amazing. Um, Good. Maggie, did you have anybody come and visit you? Yeah, my mom and dad came. Um, I think April 5th it was. They stayed at the Roxton Inn, um, like right up the street for a few days. And then then they went to London and um stayed at a hotel there. So I took a train. I had classes the first few days and they came and we walked around and we did dinner and stuff together at the Roxton Inn, which is really good if you guys want to just walk up there and get it. Um, and then I took a train into um, London with them and spent the weekend with them there. Excellent. Excellent. Good, good, good. Um, all right. Now, let me open up the, uh, the the floor here to any students who are, are currently applying or thinking about applying to Roxton. Do you have any questions that you think you'd like to ask either students who are currently at Roxton or students who have recently returned? Um, I'm just going to open it up. Just unmute yourself and, and feel free to ask away. Not I have a question. Now. I have a question about tuition. OK. Oh, very specific. OK. Yeah, um, I know I heard that it's kind of around the same price as a tuition, like a, a semester price here. But I wanted to know maybe what additional, I guess, costs for Roxton that like are not here. Excellent question. And 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 everybody can jump in if, I, if you feel I'm, spe I'm misspeaking here. Um, I like to say that um, Roxton tuition room and board is relatively the same as if you were staying uh, here on campus and taking classes during the course of a semester. I will say there is a Roxton fee that is attached to going to uh, for a semester at Roxton. I'll have to check, but I think it was $1,500. And But of that $1,500, $1,000 of it is wiped away by a, uh, a, a grant that is given to each student who goes to Roxton. So in the end, maybe you spend an extra five or $600 as a fee to go. But with that fee comes the four-day trip to Scotland, the four-day trip to Paris, any sort of entrance uh, fees you have for uh, theater performances, for classes, museum visits, and that sort of thing. So you do get something for the extra money that you spend, even if it's a couple hundred extra dollars. Um, there, It is comparable um, to your time here at FDU, or if we have any students from our, our partner universities, um, it will be comparable to what you're paying for your home tuition and room and board as well. 
I will also say that not everybody gets one, but there are a variety of Broxton scholarships ranging from $500 all the way up to $1,500. Um, and those are given based on merit and acad academic merit and need. Um, so really, to sum things up, it is relatively the same amount as if you were to spend time here, um, either on your New Jersey campus or at one of our partner institutions. You do have to pay for airfare, which ranges anywhere from $700 up to maybe $1,000, depending on the semester you're going. Um, and then after that, it's any sort of spending money while you're there. Spending money um, is sort of a wide range. I've had a student go to Roxton and spend less than $500, as insane as that sounds. It is possible to go to Roxton and spend less than $500. I will say, though, that the average student has a tendency to spend around $2,000 of their own money, maybe $2,500 tends to be the sort of range, um, and that includes travel break, the range that students spend. Um, if anybody wants to raise a hand and say that I'm completely wrong, please do. Um, but that's sort of what I tell students. Uh, just one thing, there's also like a Roxton health insurance. I'm not sure like how much it is, but you should also take that into account. But also your right. stats are definitely going to go up for this semester with that spending. So, yeah, yeah. no, I will. <laughs> it will go up. It will go up a tick. I do. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm straight honest with people. Um, there is. There is a health insurance. It's not a fortune, but it is an extra fee that to go there. I think it's an extra. I don't know, seventy five bucks or one hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. Um, but yeah, there is that extra fee. Go ahead. Anybody at Roxy want to step in and say anything else? No. Uh, my um, advice to you is to, um, um, if you don't have insurance, to please waive the insurance fee on on um, self service because it will it will help out a lot with lowering down the fees. And the insurance for Roxon is really not that bad. It's only like like Ryan said, fifty to one hundred seventy five dollars. I was kind of surprised. I thought that was going to be like more than thousand dollars or something because. I don't know how British, well, before, I don't know how British healthcare was here. So I was quite surprised to see that the insurance for coming here is not as bad as they thought it would be. Right, and, uh, right, right. And, not uh, to get too, yeah, go ahead. And off topic, I just want to say, because this is a lesson I learned the hard way, make sure you have all your classes registered for. They don't say plan or like registered for them. I'm very sure, because I know you were in this email as well, you know, the pain that I was going through with my government class trying to get in there. Um, so I would just want to say, like, make sure you have all your classes registered for and go check, make sure everything's uh, good. Right, right. That's a very specific thing. But for those students, um, I tell students to, um, to look at the courses that they've been registered in prior to going to Roxton and any changes they would like to make or need to make have to go through the study abroad office. Um, but that's something that we can discuss down the road. Are there any other questions from interested students? We've got just a couple minutes left before we wrap up. Any other questions from students I, who are, go ahead. My bad, I didn't mean to cut you off. No worries. Um, I have two questions. Um, the first one was about, um, I wasn't sure, I came a little late, so I wasn't sure if it was mentioned already. But when it comes to the uh, weekend trips and um, um, the the travel break, um, where do you, like, does everyone, like, stay, per se? Since, you know, some people go outside of um, Roxton, like, because like, I want to go, I'll just say an example. I want to go to Italy with one of my friends. So, like, when we get there, like, where do we stay at? Right. So it's it's pretty much on you. Um, there is some guidance. Hopefully there's some guidance offered by Roxton. But for the most part, you've got 10 days off. And um, for those 10 days, uh, when you get to Roxton, you can talk to your fellow classmates and see what they're up to. If you see or, or know that some other people are going to Italy, um, you might want to tag along with them. Um, you might want to get some advice on what students have done in the past in regards to booking a trip. Um, but it's really on you. Um, to book wherever you'd like to go um, to that particular country, uh, how long you'd like to stay there. It's just Roxton gives you 10 days off to sort of do what you want to do in Europe. Um, so it really is on you what you think you'd like to do. You don't have to do anything. You can stay at Roxton for those 10 days and chill and maybe have parents or friends come over. 
but for the most part, it is up to you what you'd like to do. Um, yeah, I just, so for the weekend trip specifically, like something we talked about was our time in Scotland, Edinburgh. We also had a trip to Paris and for stuff like that, they have a hotel for you that you have to book. The only time that we had to book a living situation for ourselves was like that first weekend in London, which was kind of like, ah, just because we had never done it before, <laughs> uh, you know, um, but that's okay. Um, so they, they set up a lot of those excursions to make you independent. And that's one of the most beneficial things that I've gotten so far from the Roxton experience is that it forces you to be able to, um, you know, be sufficient for yourself. Like the premier in that we stayed at, we had a room and they had breakfast for us. But other than that, you had to figure it out on your own. Um, but what Brian was saying about finding people who are doing similar things, um, as you and going to and going to do that. I'm staying with um, my boyfriend and his mom who lives in Ireland for the first part of it. So I have family here. So it just sort of depends like how you whatever, like what works for you and, and how you feel about that. But there is a sense of like they they want you to be independent and to make the experience your own. So and, and just so you know, you don't have to go on every single trip. Yeah. Um, like there, like I didn't go on that first um London trip. While well, you will be one of the few, it's still it's still an option. You can just opt out of um the weekend trips. So that's also an option if you just don't want to go. So I would recommend going to at least a, a good handful of them. And on that note, you know, there's no right way to do Roxton. Just do it your way. Um, you don't have to, you know, try to fulfill anybody's wants or desires for you but yourself. And you can definitely take inspiration and cues from other people. Definitely ask whatever questions. Like, we're all in the same boat. Whether you know people, whether you're new friends with them, whether you're not friends with them, it doesn't really matter. We're all in the same boat. And so there is this sense of, like, let's all help each other out. And, yeah, a little bit of community here, which is really nice. Well said. Well said. Well said. <laughs> well said. Well said. Any other questions? From from uh, from prospective students, anything? That I have a quick. Go ahead, Kaylin. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Are you there, Kaylin? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. It like froze. Um, okay. For the scholarships, do you have to apply? Like, can you apply for a scholarship or? Are they kind of given to you by like, uh, like they get picked? Good question. So, so I, as I mentioned before, everybody who goes to Rocks and gets a one thousand dollar grant automatically. There is a short little application in the post acceptance documents that students can fill out. But a lot of the times, what happens is, is that students or parents reach out to me individually, and you can do this as well. If you reach out to me and just say, "Hey, Brian, can you consider me for some extra money?" Um, I can absolutely do that. So I don't mean to point anybody out here, but if you do reach out to me, um, I'll do my best to um, to get you a scholarship or at least get you some amount of money to help out. Even if it's just a couple hundred bucks for airfare, I can do that. Also, just something to piggyback on that. Um, you can also apply to scholarships that come from the Forum campus, for example. So um, there was one scholarship that it had nothing to do with rocks and nothing to do with international students, nothing to do with like anything as such. Um, but, you know, FDU sends out emails saying, you know, this is an open scholarship and, you know, apply if, if you want. So I applied to one and I ended up getting it. So it's not like you're just limited to like rocks and specific scholarships. You can't, what? you're still open and you can still apply to other scholarships that are also like, um, based in, in, uh, your home campus. Right. Excellent set. I mean, one, for example, is the Gilman Scholarship. If you look up Gilman, just type in Gilman Scholarship. It's a it's a one page little application and it's it's a pretty much guaranteed couple hundred extra dollars for students who are interested in doing that. Any other questions before we wrap up? Uh, I have a question about the um, the flight. So is the flight booked through the school and we just pay the fee or do we book our own flight there? No, no. What happens is that because that we've, I mean, in the past, I've tried to sort of book group flight, but we have students coming from so many different airports, so many different locations. What I try to do just to make sort of life easier for people is that I just 
I designate what I call a group flight, and I put that in quotes because it's not a group flight in the sense that I'm buying the the, the individual tickets. I'm saying that this is the group flight. This is the flight that I'm going to be on. This is the flight to pick up and drop off by rocks and is going to be based around. It leaves out of Newark. It lands at Heathrow Airport. The majority of students who live in sort of the Northeast area, live in New Jersey, get on that group flight. But if you're from California or you're from Oregon or Texas, you would you would book your flight around our arrival time so that you can take advantage of the pickup by Roxton. Um, so what happens is that you're going to get accepted. Hopefully, I think you will. You'll get accepted in those post acceptance documents. You'll see the group flight information. It'll be on you to book that group flight and then confirm with me that you booked it. And if indeed you take another flight, let me know what flight that is. So at least I can track you and we could potentially get you set up to meet us at the airport. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Well, before we sign off, does anybody have any last questions or, or comments or anything? I actually have one more question. All right, go ahead. Um, do all scholarships that we had for this campus in New Jersey transfer over to Roxton? Yes, everything okay. stays the same because you are you stay an FDU student when you go to Roxton. Um, you maintain all of your financial aid, grants, loans, scholarships. Everything stays in place. Thank you. Good question. Good question. All right, folks. Well, listen, um, thank you all for participating. For those students who are currently at Roxton, you're sort of mid-semester. All right. Take a break. Enjoy your travel break and uh, and um, get your papers in on time. For those students who have joined us who were at Roxton last semester, thank you, guys. Your participation in this at least shows that um, there's a passion for students who return from Roxton, that it was a good experience in your mind. And I appreciate you guys stepping up and uh, and showing out for me and coming out and, uh, and helping out. For those students who are applying to Roxton or interested in Roxton, um, you know how to reach me. If you have any questions about the application, October 27th is the deadline. Um, but I hope uh, everybody gets their application in and we all get you guys all over to Roxton. All right. Thanks, everybody. Time for dinner. 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 Time for dinner.